Good morning, brethren. Do you have joy this morning? Because if you do, it comes from the Lord. True joy. Joy that doesn't, isn't just stirred up by a certain uh, time or thing that's going on, but joy that's everlasting. Joy that comes from another source that's not of yourself or because of the surroundings. This is a joy that only comes from being close with Jesus Christ. Being able to see that God is love. Because of Christ we can see this. See what we have is better than anything the world has to offer. What the world has to offer temporary, temporary satisfaction. But it, it's, it will dwindle away. I mean, it, you'll hit a high point. I'm not, I'm not going to argue that. You can hit a high point, but you got to keep that going or else it's, it's going to kind of just dwindle away. You get something new or it's going to become old. See, when Christ, you come in, you're new, and you stay new for eternity. Amen. That doesn't change. Mm-hmm. When, you, when you come in to the kingdom, it's better than anything you've ever had before, and it keeps getting better for eternity. Yeah. It doesn't get worse. It gets better. Amen. So as believers in Christ Jesus, what we got going for us is better than what the world has to offer. Amen. See, and all Satan could do is to get your eyes off of Christ because he knows he cannot contend with what the Lord has. So he just offers your flesh. This is why we're told to crucify our flesh daily. Put it on the cross and seek the Lord. Seek him. That you will find him. Knock and the door will be open. God's not hiding himself from you. He's wide open. He sent his son to die for us. So we could look. See, this is, we got several things going for us that is a blessing. And it's good for us to talk about it. We can look in the past and be blessed. We can look in the present and be blessed. And we can look into the future and be blessed. Yeah. So no matter what's happening to us right now, we can be blessed and filled with joy. We can be, we can be going through hardships and struggles. It happens. Everybody goes through hardships and struggles. But you can look to Christ in the midst of being in prison, you can sing a hymn. For we are saved by hope. Romans 8.24. Hope in what? We're hoping in what Christ has done, what he's doing, and what he's going to be doing when we're going to be with him for eternity. Why do people get overwhelmed, worn out? Why do they do anything to not look to the future? It's because they don't see Christ. When you see Christ, the past, present, and future looks good to you. No hope for those who do not have Christ, because Christ is our hope. Because of Jesus, we can look to the past with joy. Romans 5, 6, it says, For when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. So you can look back and see, that was a good thing. I mean, that, that's a blessing to just ponder on what Christ did for you. Mm-hmm. When you, 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 didn't have, you didn't make a choice in that. You weren't even around when Christ died for you. You can be blessed by looking back and seeing what Christ has done. We can have joy in the present. We have now an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, John, 1 John 2, 1. We can think about that right now. We have an advocate that he is there working with us, that he bringing us to the Father, that we may be acceptable right now. We don't have to wait for this. We got it now. We have received abundance of grace, Romans 5, 17. Right now, we have, in this present time, we have abundance of grace that we can tap into right now. 2 Corinthians 9, 8 says, God is able, see, there's a difference here between God and the things of the world. The things of the world that will be offered to you, hey, I'll give you this, I'll give, and it only lets you down every time. Because it really can't, it can't come through. It, when it, it comes through, it just falls flat. But God, 
Now, he's able. God is able to make all grace abound, not just a little bit, but abound toward you that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. That's what we got going for us right now. We can find joy in that. that God, he's given us the grace that we need to be to abound in everything that we, go, that we do for the Lord. We don't come up short in anything. Yeah. Not when God, God is giving us what we need right now. We have joy in the future. Matthew 25, 34 says, Then shall the king say unto them, on his right hand, come ye, blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. That's what we have to look forward to. That we, as we now are fighting the good fight of faith and we're focusing on the Lord, I mean, we're focusing on the Lord and not on the things of the world. This is what we have to look forward to. So we can receive joy now, thinking about what Christ has done, what he's doing, and we can receive joy. See, he just doesn't stop. It's overflowing. 2 Corinthians 4.17 says, For our light afflictions right now, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding an eternal weight of glory. See, what, what the future looks for us can bring you joy right now. Amen. It's far more exceeding mm -hmm. weight of glory. Mm -hmm. See, some, they don't want to look to the future because they got nothing going for us. Yeah. But this is what we got going for us, brother. We got glory that you just can't, it's so big. It's so blessed. You can't even, you can't even think, you don't have the capacity right now. We could, be, we could be filled with joy to think about it, but you really don't, you can't, it's going to be better than whatever you imagine. Amen. See, that's what the future, that's what we got going for us in the future. As we look to Jesus, we can see that we have what we need. All things pertain to life and godliness, 2 Peter 1, 3. We're not coming up short in any area, brethren, in Christ Jesus. It's staying close to him. It's setting our minds on, on, on the things above and drawing in near to him that we receive the blessing. We are complete in Christ, Colossians 2.10. Complete meaning we do not need to go anywhere else. He is what we need. He has the resources we need. The world can't offer us anything to help us where Christ has already done more abundantly than the world has to offer. <clears throat> the world will say Jesus is not enough. We need resources that only come from the world. This is what the world will tell you. Yeah, well, but, you, but, but you really, you know, you need to come here to us. We've got really what you need to succeed. No, in Christ Jesus, you have everything that you need to succeed. And that success is the goal, to be with our Father in heaven for eternity. Jesus is enough. God has taken a lot of time to show us what man could do on their own. He's pulled back and shown us how man can succeed on, without him. We can't. We fall flat without Christ. Without the Lord working on our behalf, we come up short. We no, we don't just come short. We fall flat. Not even come close. Without our heart being knit to Christ, we will be cast into the lake of fire. Because we can't make it without Christ. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire, the word of God tells us. See, the, with Christ, eternal success. Without Christ, fire. That's, that's, the, that's the options we got here. 1 John 5.13 says, These things have I written unto you that 
believe on the name of the Son of God that ye may know that ye have eternal life. Mm -hmm. You don't have to guess at this now. Mm -hmm. In Christ Jesus, you know mm -hmm. that you have eternal life. Mm -hmm. See, no matter what's going on, mm -hmm. you can think about these things and it can, it can bless you and, and fill your heart with joy. Now, if we let go of these things, God is, God's word will slip away. It will slip, and the world will look more appealing to us. So it does take work for us to see it. It does take work for us to set our minds on the word of God and to prepare for the coming of the Lord. It does take us walking with the Lord. We cannot walk with the world and walk with the Lord. We've got to make, there is a decision that we have to make. I, I know this, this gets into an area where God, God's doing the choosing. But we are being, God is allowing us to be a part of, the, of this. That we do have some choices to make. We chose to be here. The Lord is drawing us here and we chose to be here because we wanted to be here this morning. So we can't let these things slip away from us. But when you do choose to be with the Lord, the Lord has cho chosen us when we, we uh, draw near and we, we, we set our minds on things above and push the things of the world away. This will give us the greatest advantage. When we, we position ourselves to be with Christ, you will be advantaged by this, both by living now and when you're dying on your deathbed. As we get closer to Christ, we can see that the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. See, and there's nothing that looks better than the love of God that he has. If a person cannot see the love of God as seen in Christ, they will not live for God. The goal is to walk close with God so that we never stop. When the time comes, we just continue to walk with him into eternity. That's the goal, is to be with him for eternity. Genesis 5.24 talks about Enoch, who walked with God and was not, for God took him. And I love to think about this. I think it was Brother Gibbon who first talked about this. It was like he was just walking so close that God just said, why don't we just keep on going to my house? We want to get so far away from the world and close to the Lord that the transition mm -hmm. from here to there, it just is just, it just natural, just smooth. Mm -hmm. Just goes smooth. Amen. As we grow, grow close to the divine influence and stay in the perimeter away from the world, Sin doesn't become as appealing anymore. Mm -hmm. we, we, it just loses its appeal. We will become more and more attracted to our God. This is where we want to be. This is where we can see the love of God. So we take captive our thoughts in this good fight of faith, focusing deliberately mm -hmm. on Christ not a casual considering him when we pray for our food, but to perceive who Christ is when we wake up in the morning, to be aware of him throughout our day, and to behold the love of God in Christ when we lay our heads down at night. A glance toward the Lord from time to time will lead to destruction. It's not enough. Allowing temporal matters to dominate our thoughts will pull us away from the Lord. So today, brethren, as we have come together, let us today and every day turn our heads toward heaven and focus on God's marvelous love that he has for us, looking forward to the day that we can make an easy transition from here to there, as Enoch did when he walked so close with God that he took him. Amen. Let us now pray for Sister June as she leads us in class discussion.